Welcome to a show about things you can see without going far, and a lot of them are free. If you thought there was nothing in the old heartland, you ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out art in their own backyard. Randy does the steering so he won't hurl. Mike's got the map, such a man of the world. That's done with the camera, kind of heavy on his shoulder. And that giant ball of tape, it's a world record holder. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out art in their own backyard. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out the world in their own backyard. Checking out the world in their own backyard. Dear TV Mailbag, where are those blood-sucking bugs? Hi, Don the Camera Guy here, fully aware that the state bird of Wisconsin is the mosquito. Maybe it's just too early for them, but not too early this morning for a piece of pie. Suddenly, these producers realize we're in Osseo, home of the original Norsky Nook, justifiably famous for their baked goods, whose baked goodness we've sampled before at their other location. Oh, Lord. Yeah. That's the raspberry sour cream. Misty right said here. that was the best pie in the house. Yeah. I'm suffering from sliding meringue. You put it on the dashboard, it uh, being like an extra airbag. <laughs> oh, I gotta learn to make this. I gotta learn to get to Wisconsin more often. Calorically speaking, we've pretty much shot our wad for the day. If not for the entire week, but that's okay because this seems to be a land where big things abound. Take, for example, Nielsville, home of Chatty Bell, the world's largest talking cow who will chat you up for the price of a quarter. Hello, my name is Chatty Bell. Thanks for stopping at WCCN's Wisconsin Pavilion. Welcome. Thanks for talking to us. On the other side of me is a replica of the original world's largest piece of cheese. 14 and a half feet long, six and a half feet wide, five and a half feet tall. I like the, the largest cheese in the history of mankind. That's right, Bullet. This is Bullet, Chatty, no. Chatty Bell's little one. I watch it in case Albert shows up. Albert the Bull? Yeah. They had a little thing. They're both pretty famous, so their, their handlers were trying to keep it quiet. Sounds like Randy's had too much or not enough coffee which helps explain why we're heading now for the radio station slash gift shop to sample some more of the local souvenirs. After some careful consideration of possible purchases, we sacked up the goods and resumed the driving portion of our show, driving even deeper into the heart of the state. Here just outside Marshfield, a lawyer with apparently too much time on his hands has unearthed something he feels compelled to share with the world. It all comes out of the marsh down here. We lived on the edge of the Big McMillan Marsh. It stretches for several miles north of town. And I was digging down there a few years ago and uh, came across this big bird with a nine-foot wingspan hung in the tree up there, and it flies. And the neighbors would come by and say, where'd you ever get something like this? Well, I dug it out of the marsh out here, inhabited the marsh during the Iron Age, but they're extinct now. What extincted them? Sometimes, I think industrial pollution was one of the causes that uh, came in and they didn't have any anti-rust solutions or anything, and they, I think they just corroded away. Here's a real medical curiosity. It's a Siamese twin chain dragon. This is a swamp gator here. This is a uh, positron. See, they're, they're very affirmative birds. And these are the marsh mosquitoes. They were worse last year. This is an ambivalatron. See, they're very indecisive birds. That's kind of like the marsh police. Uh, he clears the marsh of riffraff. That's riffraff up on his four-pronged trident. Have you ever seen a bong bird? No. I always took a lot of time to do things I want to do. I did a lot of stained glass, uh, motorcycling, uh, ceramics, built all my kilns and everything, and uh, just, just played around. And I always wanted to get into metal sculpture. I always had my welding equipment and that. But um, then I did that one bird, and it just sort of clicked, this marsh story. And I kept on digging. And it's a story? 
You're telling me you, you actually weld these? I have to. My wife can't weld with Diddley. <laughs> She's, she apparently can't build a straight line either. My wife and I did that wall up front, but you can, uh, you, you can see the woman doesn't have a good eye for level at all. Well, she's hung on to you, though. Apparently, that was... She's, she's a smart woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's never dull. Um, we've been married almost 44 years now, so, you know, it's kind of a habit. About a year ago, we started experimenting with some genetically modified ferrous seeds and came up with these hybrids. Oh, those are you know, they don't reproduce, but they seem to bloom forever. When we found this one in the yard, I did some research, and it uh, turned out to be a Japanese ceremonial turtle. <laughs> He gets um, carried away. These are my cool dudes. <laughs> Almost getting out of hand. <laughs> yeah, and we have some with real crude social habits we have to keep around the corner. Oh, dear. This is an oo oo turtle. Have you ever seen an oo oo turtle? The only way they can control their flights is keep those feet out there all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, when they're up there for months, those feet get pushed up shorter and shorter and shorter. But see, hanging down in the windstream, the testicles hang out longer and longer. So when it comes in for a landing, it goes ooh, ooh, ooh. Look what's raised out of the primordial ooze. <coughs> you get a lot of primordial ooze in us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, suddenly, juristic park makes sense. Jurastic. Jurastic. But you could be juristic, too, with your previous career. Come what, on, what you do don't you have mean to. By Why that? did you bring him? You don't have to listen to that. Come on, let's get <laughs> out of there. Now, if you think Clyde's really this grumpy, then I hate to bust your bubble, but there is no doubt the work he's done on Jurassic Park proves again this state is a world all its own. We were soon, in fact, passing by Rudolph, home of the Wonder Cave and Grotto Garden, which is well worth a stop, though we weren't stopping till Stevens Point. Here on the west side of town, Tony Fladoff's backyard harbors yet another one-of-a-kind homemade attraction we can't resist. Wow. I like this. This is... Yeah, this was started when, oh, about 45 years ago. And with a big fan in the middle there, the big one, that used to be the Whitey Hotel. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was in the wall. The, Remodeled it and everything, they threw it out, so I brought it here. Got the grease off of it and painted it. And put that one fan up. Yeah, yeah one fan and the four buggy wheels. That's all I had from the start. Where did the other fans come from? Oh, I was picking them up, and I had an electrician here in the town. He had a lot of fans, so he always gave them to me. And... Now, does the Wisconsin wind blow these things oh, like crazy? Oh, yeah, everyone left. The way the wind is this year, everyone was turning. So they just go like mad all day. Oh, yeah, they go just steady. They all turn, even that big one turns. <laughs> OK, we'll, get, we'll, we'll be the wind. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's really quiet. Today is really quiet. <laughs> it's like a sculpture. It is, yeah. I didn't think from the start when I'd done something, I thought people were happy for some <laughs> doing foolish thing. But no, <laughs> I don't know. It's, 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 it's in me. I got to be busy with all this. Just like my wife, she's busy with dolls, and I'm busy with this. <laughs> That's why we got old. It's a no-win situation. Now, Tony's Town is also known for a golden beverage that's produced here, of which I would be a fan. And for once, it appears I am in luck. Boy, am I thirsty. You said rap. Though all of a sudden, this sign in my stomach are getting along so well. Wow, that, well, that water's really roaring. Paper packing, that's what this part of the world is famous for. And paper packers do depend on the power of the Fox River to help produce their product. Looks like the dam tender tends his dam with a little extra flair. Now Appleton would be the hometown of Harry Houdini, but we've got no time for that. We are merely passing through past a prominent piece of public art some say resembles a horse while others see something entirely different. Our time crunch might best be described this way. 
Rudy Rodder's waiting for us, and Rudy's museum in Manitowoc takes some time to examine. That's because Rudy, trained first in dentistry and zoology, has gone on to fill three whole floors of this old factory with pieces of art that he's drawn, carved, twisted, and beaten into being. I started out with the use of clay and plaster, completely self-taught. I had done dissection in the dental school, then I uh, restudied anatomy, then I started uh, with, with clay, because with clay you can add, you can take away, you can change your mind. That's a portrait of myself. Unfortunately, there's been a change. And then after about five, six years, I took up a hammer and a chisel and I started carving. And at first I carved with local stone. Then I went into uh, buying Italian alabaster like this piece is Carrara marble, which comes from the same uh, mountain in Italy that Michelangelo's carvings came from. And so I carved all different types of stones and and woods and teak woods. I'm a big family man, as you can see, there are thousands of family, ma, pa, and the kids, as we used to say. I work FBS, fast but sloppy, and I, I don't. Just like Don. <laughs> I, 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 oh, boom. Oh, sorry. Oh. This is an old barn beam. Yeah. See? So I took that. Sometime I'll sit down here. And I'll say to myself, Rodder, how in the hell did you ever drag all this stuff and chop it? it took me uh, a number of years just to leave the chisel marks in, but I think that the, there's such a strength and beauty to the marks of yeah. the chisels. But it's kind of a departure then when you get to things like this. Right? Yes. As time went on, my joints wore out. That's what my surgeon, the physician said. Years of shot putting, distance throwing, football, uh, 50 years of practicing dentistry, uh, 45 years of hammer and chisel. So I was at a loss at first, and then I started looking for different things, and I came upon the trophy industry, and I became enamored with this. These are all trophies, and I take them and, and uh, cut pieces of wood, put these, these different colors to reflect the light. See, something like this, for instance, is just a straight piece of metal, excess metal. And I nailed it down here, then I take and start twisting oh, it. Okay, so and it's the activity of the twisting that turns into these beautiful little things like this. I did a whole series of these called Ancient Egypt. And, and this is the ancient uh, Chinese temples. I call these all variations on a theme. Rudy, I'm looking around this room and I am seeing, I don't know, I couldn't even begin to count how many pieces. Oh, well. Where did you find the time? This was my hunting, this was my fishing, this was my card playing, except for a little bridge. I used to play a little bridge. This is a jello mold, and if you look, you'll see this little outer space critter. Mm -hmm. And these are from what again? Foundry patterns, all these red things. You hate to waste anything, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. See, these, for instance, are old hospital charts. <laughs> One thing leads to another. Yeah, yeah. That's the fun of it. This is all research, constant experimentation, and constant finding different things. So can you estimate how many pieces you've done? Over 16,000, and that's without the drawings. My philosophy has been that the act of finding and creating peace is more enjoyable than the finished product. And so, when I get done with one, I go on to the other one. Get done with that, go on to the next one until I poop out, so to speak. I noticed that so many of the bases say happy. The, the reason for that happy is when I got to be 80 years old, I was happy that I was still alive because my parents had died at 62 and I was happy to be able to do this mm -hmm. so I signed everything now, happy. This whole thing has been a kind of a love thing for me and I still love it and enjoy it. Oh, you're here too. How are my teeth looking? While I'm here, I thought maybe you could uh, 
Uh, that looking okay? Yeah, your gums, you could use a little massage. A little massage see. on the gums, yeah. 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 Uh, but the real thing is, Don is missing a dental appointment today. today is all. Well, come right into my workshop. <laughs> now at 88, Rudy figures he's added 15 years to his life expectancy by doing all this. And we hope he gets 15 more. But as usual, our clock is ticking down fast. So instead of savoring the moment, we've decided to sashay on to Sheboygan. Fans of grassroots art and good plumbing may well recognize this as Kohler country. In fact, we'll be checking in with them tomorrow. But for now, since we can't find anyone to explain this bevy of birdhouses to us, we're choosing to eschew trespassing in favor of going where the gulls are. That's right, it's time for some mindless self-indulgence on the shores of Lake Michigan. You know, they keep a pretty good infield here, don't they? Go out to the lighthouse and shag that fly. You heard of Sandlot Baseball? Yeah. It kind of looks like the moon here. <laughs> Ooh. Smelt? Ah, sweet. Guess we're headed for the showers. Hope we won't see any tomorrow. Ba, 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 hey, ba. You, you haven't sung in the morning in quite a while. Da, da, it's gonna rain all day. It does indeed look like a good day for seeing outsider art inside. But fortunately, the John Michael Kohler Art Center has plenty of it to see. While the Kohler Foundation seeks out sites to save, the center serves as a showcase for art that's had to be moved to survive. In this case, moved all the way from India, where a road builder named Nek Chan worked for years on a secret garden filled with figures like these. He was working for the government um, on the capital city project to build the new capital of Chandigarh. And, and it struck an idea in him and he went back to a story that his mother had told him when he was a kid about a magical kingdom where everything was about peace and love and a lot of spiritual beliefs of Hinduism incorporated into that. He collected and stockpiled and hauled things out to the, to the site on his bicycle at night for six years before he even started building. A lot of the, the concrete he made is sort of a handmade concrete. The, the broken dishes came from countless hotels, restaurants, and you can see their markings and their insignias frequently. He's a master collector and uh, you know, it's sort of the continuity in his vision comes from his ability to stockpile this stuff until he has enough to do something with. And the bangles that encrust the surface here, they're also, if you see these figures back in the corner, they're made from the bangles. A lot of the works have been vandalized, damaged by weather, all sorts of things have happened to him. So we, uh, we took a lot of works that needed, needed conservation and we're still working our way through the project. And over in the other room, little things, uh, which, which are part of, I guess, Wisconsin's lore as well. Or... Levi Fisher Ames was a Civil War veteran and did a lot of wood carving sort of in his retirement. He was a storyteller and he just absolutely loved to have people over. He would carve little animals and plants and bugs and things and talk about them and I think the more invested he became in telling the story, the more complex his carvings became. Levi Fisher Ames, the artist, never sold any of the works. He believed firmly that you just couldn't possibly understand the group unless it was seen together. He used to pack them all up and put them in crates that he had made and take them from site to site at local state fairs and set them up and tell all about them. Now considering who's behind all this, it's not really all that surprising that the facility's facilities are unlike anything you've seen before. So nice that these producers seem reluctant to leave. But wait, there's more down in storage where only weasels dare to tread, including nearly all the pieces from Jimmy Bolin, the original rhinestone cowboy's rhinestone abode, move lock, stock, and barrel from Macomb, Mississippi for periodic display here. It's an enormous project and it's very fragile. Uh, you can only take it down and put it up so many times. 
and as you can imagine, glitter on construction paper with glue. Uh, it was a challenge to save it. He was a performer sort of before he was a, you know, a, a visual artist. So his clothing, his hats, his boots, his uh, jackets, you know, all of the furniture, they're all sort of part of the, the persona that he built up. Even his teeth. Yes, even his rhinestone inlaid dentures. Yes, Jimmy's claim to fame were those rhinestones, while Eugene von Bruckenheim, a poet, painter, and photographer from Milwaukee, may best be remembered for his work in a medium that must be seen to be believed. How does one work with chicken bones? That's a good question. <laughs> I think he's one of the only ones I've ever seen. From what we can figure out by uh, having them in our possession and working with them, is that he used model airplane glue. So they're glued together with airplane glue and then there is a small wire sometimes that runs inside the neck pieces and in the coils up here and in the tops. We found his home literally uh, stacked with artwork from floor to ceiling and wall to wall. These we found all through the home. Um, <laughs> oh my. They're actually pretty sturdy. Uh, little pieces, um, much more sturdy than the bone towers are. Um, which That's is a throne, almost. Actually, right, a throne, exactly. Which is um, the largest one we found in a house, um, made of all kinds of large fowl bones. How much chicken would you have to eat to, to make these? <laughs> I have no idea, but if Kentucky Fried Chicken was in his neighborhood, <laughs> they were able to get rid of a lot of things. Oh, my. We do know that the paint on a lot of the pieces uh, was from paint given to him by neighbors and friends of him because he couldn't afford paint. <laughs> they were able to Clearly the Kohlers have made this their mission, saving grassroots art hither and yon, which even includes right here in their own backyard. Seems that James Tellen was a local furniture maker whose fancy turned to concrete, which helps explain why his woods were filled with religion and history. President. Nature and Disney movies. Pieces that are best appreciated in their natural environment. But now we're saying so long to Sheboygan, climbing back into a cramped minivan for one final fling at another genuine roadside attraction. Outside Pardeeville, it is a small world after all. A world of styrofoam miniatures, all made by a retired junior high teacher who seems far too glad to see us. You're supposed to get your tuition here. Wow. You have come <laughs> for me. Eh? I have come for you, kid. Alrighty. How you doing? I started building models in 72. We built them originally for ourselves at home. And then we outgrew the backyard, so we bought this place. And almost everything in the park is now styrofoam. My wife and I both work together on these. She does whatever, and we is politically correct. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. Here's Tara from oh. Run With The Wind. Yeah. And you notice the two figures on the front porch. Frankly, I don't get it damn. <laughs> and off to my right is uh, an English pub where Dickens wrote The Christmas Carol. That'd be your other Supposedly. right. Yeah, that'd be your other right. I'm That's on my left, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Loosen guys, up a little, will you? You guys, you guys are terrible. <laughs> Off to my right is a, oh. is a Frank Lloyd Wright home called the Roby House in Chicago, Illinois. If it was over there, it would be Frank Lloyd left. Right. <laughs> and this is the United Nations Complex. Oh, yeah, I recognize that. In, wow, you know, that's pretty amazing. There's a lot of detail in that. Or there was. You don't really have a plan on on these things until just a moment strikes you in the middle of the night, or what? Yeah, sort of. Uh, we try to do as many historical buildings as possible. There's no ge geography part going here. I mean, anything can be anywhere, right? Correct. Because Taj Mahal looks awfully close to, to Philadelphia there. Well, we moved it. <laughs> so you actually work from plans? Yes. Yeah, we try to get as much information as we can, if not the exact, exact plans, some fairly exact dimensions, and then I can scale it down. So what was the most daunting challenge so far? The cathedral took over 9,000 hours. Yeah, five years. Really? Yeah, off and on. <laughs> not straight? Yeah, we did all the statuary, all the glass work ourselves. Did you go hog wild on this because of your French background? No, I just think it's one of the most beautiful cathedrals in the world. 
I'd say we're pretty jaw-dropped by the whole thing. Yeah, I'm amazed at how much work you've done here. It's, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing it. What is it with Wisconsin? Maybe you, yeah. can, Maybe you can... Why are there so many oddballs people? live here. So now it's that time in the show when we bestow our official shirt. Well, thank you. Well, because an XL doesn't come in miniature. <laughs> grab a few souvenirs and start heading for home. Although I fear Mike may be a little too excited about the prospect. Mike, be careful, Mike. This is Don the Camera Guy, signing off. I'm out of here. Whoa. <laughs> That's a good shot. Hey, Mikey. It's over here, a Titleist. Were you playing a Titleist? It's over here by the White House. See? Okay. Now pull it away. Yeah. yeah. Just to prove how good. See? I got a likeness. Pretty That's good. Pretty big. But look inside. I mean, Lincoln sitting on his throne and everything. And the roofs are all a product called Insulcrete. It's really hard because of hail. Well, we get hail here every once in a while, and um, I catch hail at home sometimes. I catch it all the time. Now those are miniature, right? That's smaller than the actual capital was. These guys are terrible. I tell you. Say what? I say you guys are terrible. <laughs>